Our next question tonight is a video from David Hicks, uh, formerly of Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, now living in Sydney, New South Wales. Hi, I'm David Hicks. When you were Prime Minister, you left me in Guantanamo Bay for five and a half years. During that time, I was detained without charge for a long time. I was denied a fair trial. I was tortured. Do you believe that I was treated humanely and that the military commission was a fair system? Thank you. Well, I'll make a couple of... Uh, a couple of uh, responses to uh, David Hicks. The first is that isn't it a great country that allows this kind of exchange to occur? And this is not the sort of exchange that would occur in other countries and in dictatorships, and it ought to make all of us very... Whatever our views are about my government's policies concerning Mr Hicks, it ought to make all of us very proud that we live in a country that allows that sort of exchange. Now, having said that, uh, can, I, can I simply say that I defend what my government did in relation to Iraq, in relation to the military commissions. We put a lot of pressure on the Americans to accelerate uh, the charges being brought against David Hicks. And I remind the people watching this program that David Hicks did prove, did plead guilty to a series, series, offense, a series of offences. And, and they, of course, involved him in full knowledge of what had happened on the 11th of September, uh, attempting to return to Afghanistan and rejoin the people with whom he had trained. So let's understand the reality of what David Hicks pleaded guilty to. Mr Howard, uh, on this question of him pleading guilty, mm. uh, Mr Hicks says in his own book uh, that his military lawyer, David Morrie, was told by your staff uh, that Hicks wouldn't be released from Guantanamo Bay unless he pleaded guilty. Uh, was that... Well, I'm, was, I'm, was that I'm not aware of any such exchange, but look, I mean, there's been a lot of criticism of that book by sources quite unrelated to me, and uh, I've read some very, very severe criticisms of that book. And uh, look, um, David, David Hicks um, trained with um, the Taliban. David Hicks was associated with... Uh, groups that uh, were behaving in a manner that was uh, completely opposed to the interests of this country. And, uh, and uh, I think the idea that uh, we, should, we should see him as a hero is, uh, is very misplaced. It's the, it, the question was about uh, whether or not uh, he was advised well, well look, look, I, I am, I am, I am did, did you ever ask no, any I, of your staff? I certainly personal? didn't advise him. I didn't give any authority for that advice to be given. Uh, because we've been told by a very reliable source... Oh, yeah, uh, which one? ..that uh, I'm not going to name <laughs> no, on this programme... No, of course not, no. <laughs> ..that the, uh, that is the message the Hicks defence team was given consistently by your government. Well, look, the, the message that my government was conveying, um, me to, to George Bush and to Richard Cheney, Alexander Downer to Condoleezza Rice, was that we wanted the trial of Hicks to be accelerated. We thought he'd been held in detention for too long without trial. Uh, I made that clear on numerous occasions, but that didn't in any way diminish uh, uh, my very strong view that we should not create a situation where he became a hero because he was not a hero. Right, very briefly, to go back to uh, Mr Hicks' uh, question on the military commissions, uh, and this is a question that's been asked mm. on a number of occasions by Hicks' military lawyer, Michael Morrie. If mm. the military commissions weren't good enough for British or US citizens, why were they OK for an Australian citizen? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's... Well, that's a... well, well the, the military commission was a system that dates back uh, a, a long way into American history. It's not, it wasn't something that was invented uh, by, by the Bush administration. And one of the reasons why, uh, and it should be remembered, is one of the reasons why it took so long for Hicks to be brought to trial was that many of the people who opposed the military commission system were, were fighting the legality and, 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 and the basis on which the military commissions had been established. Uh, but the Americans and the British would not have put their citizens before a military commission. Why, well, why, well, well, why, well, well, why is Australia different? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I took, I took the view that it was better that somebody go to, before a military commission, with, <coughs> given the charges that have been um, laid against them or the allegations that are being made against them, I took the view that it was better that they go before a military commission than they be brought back to Australia and not be capable of being charged. And what you've got to remember... If there's people who were brought before 
the military, uh, taken to Guantanamo Bay and potentially brought before the military commission. If there was no military commission procedure and they were brought back to Australia or Britain, they had to be set free. There was no way they could be charged under Australian law. And, okay. the, and remember, when you go abroad as an Australian, you have no right to expect Australian law to follow you. You are subject to, the, to, to other laws. And so what, was it better that somebody who was alleged to have done these things go through a military commission or they come back to Australia and be completely free without charge and without trial, which is better for the national interest of Australia?